I think my role as a police officer is to guide the people I'm policing. I teach the new immigrants the laws in Canada, build a relationship with them, and you have to be a leader to do this. Right now, a lot of our formal training is based on practical law enforcement. They teach us community policing, but until you get out into the community and practice what you know, you don't know how, how well you're going to do. Hi, Jacqueline. Hi, Neho. Hi, Neho. Anybody who hasn't had direct experience with the Asian community can't understand their needs. My goal is to gain their trust, to be a role model for their community. But I also believe I can be a leader with my colleagues by helping them understand the Chinese culture. Hi, Lori. How are you? Good. This is Jacqueline. Jacqueline's a shop owner. Then they can gear their investigations so as to gain the community's cooperation. You can't program leadership. It's got to come from the heart. Unless you have the desire to lead and teach others, you won't be able to enforce the laws properly. I believe that starts at recruitment. You screen applicants for leadership or interactive skills. I like being on the street. I like working with the public. I like the thrill of the chase and catching the bad guys. And I like being a leader. Today, policing faces greater challenges than ever. Increased demands, finite resources. To find a solution requires quality leadership. A new model has been developed that creates that leadership from within. Every officer a leader is a three-dimensional process that starts with recruitment and continues throughout a career. It includes formal training in the classroom, to on-the-job assignments where leadership can be put into practice, and is reinforced by individual initiatives supported by the program. It's a new way of looking at officer potential focusing on individual development and opening a new era in leadership. I have to trust the employees that work for me. I've got 1,200 employees. Each and every one of them is being challenged to be a risk taker, an entrepreneur, to understand the point of contact to service. The model that we're providing here is going to provide a leadership model for the rest of the city and certainly is going to be much more productive than the old command and control style. I think it's real important that we celebrate our successes I spend a number of hours each week either handwriting notes back to my employees on their small successes or a phone call to their home to let them know that the leadership in this organization cares and supports them in what they're doing. Police! The challenges facing the Tucson Police Department, I'm sure, are similar in other major cities. Increasing juvenile violent crime, the call load continually rising, population increasing, and the cost of technology and, and other applications of uh, science uh, and the dollar signs that go with it. We have achieved a number of partnerships, primarily with the federal government, the University of Arizona, and the state of Arizona, in trying to leverage our resources to maximize their effectiveness. I believe our number one asset is leadership, and it starts with who we hire. People who can flourish in an environment that's supportive, that's communicative, and that people are looking to the future and providing service to their community will flourish here. But I would like to describe my leadership style uh, by using a, uh, an old proverb that says something along the lines that of the best leaders, when that leader is gone, we will say we did it ourselves. Leadership is not a position. It's a process of people influencing people. That process starts with recruit training in the classroom. Throughout the academy, officers are given opportunities to exercise leadership abilities. In every role, in every context, they are reminded of the principle, every officer a leader. Formal training continues beyond graduation. The field training officer program develops critical leadership skills in advance of promotion. Using state-of-the-art technology, follow-on training can be provided to anyone, anywhere. Such consistent training pays off in positive leadership. Well, patrol to me is where the rubber meets the road. When the public calls for a, the sheriff's department, they expect to see somebody who is a leader or a role model, and the deputy sheriff is the one that arrives on scene. That's the first person that they really see. Uh, some of the pressures that might come with the job are uh, actually having a trainee ride along with me, someone that's fresh out of the academy. So it can get pretty intense, especially in a difficult situation. Uh, not only is the public uh, looking to me as a leader, but my trainee is also learning from me. We actually respond to crimes in progress as well as family disputes. Uh, an example would be the other day, me and my partner, who is my trainee, she and I responded to a call of a mother-daughter dispute where the daughter wanted to run away. So again, in front of the trainee, I showed the trainee basically how to handle that situation. 
and I referred the mother to uh, and the daughter to our juvenile diversion detective at the station. They actually arranged a meeting with them, so hopefully we can resolve some of the conflicts that they're having. Because I don't want to have to come home today and find out that somebody was playing with it and a little kid got hurt. Okay, so never play with guns, okay? Uh, several times I've actually had the occasion to speak to school children. Uh, many times the child might see us as a threat to them because maybe maybe their parents have been arrested by a, a cop and, and basically they get a negative attitude towards us. But I think it's good for a deputy sheriff or an officer to go into the schools and reach out to the kids and let them show them that uh, we are role models and that we're not the scary people that they might think we are. I think when the public calls on the San Diego County Sheriff's Department, they expect to see a deputy sheriff who's a leader, someone who's uh, ready, willing, and able to respond in a crisis situation and take control of the situation. And I think when they call the San Diego County Sheriff's Department, the deputy sheriff that responds is a leader, and that's what they get. Public expectations can help drive change, but only the organization can make it happen. Every officer a leader is a process that creates positive change. It starts with classroom training, and continues with on-the-job operational assignments. It's a critical part of leadership development. Research shows that on-the-job assignments have the greatest impact, including mentoring, task force assignments, and community interaction. When challenging developmental plans are built into an organization's mission, the result is effective and ethical leadership on all levels. When you say that you're a leader, you're a role model, you have to actually give someone something positive to look forward to. You have to be secure with yourself. Inspector Lloyd L. Coward, Jr. You have to be people-oriented, I think. And you have to learn how to deal with all situations, all types of people. You have to be able to get down with the agents that get out on the streets and dealing with the nuts and bolts of investigations. Um, in 1994, I was assigned to a multi-agency task force in New Orleans, Louisiana, which comprised of a conglomerate of agencies in that we pulled together to remove guns and drugs from the housing projects, scattered sites, Section 8 areas within the city. I was able to use my skills as a leader and as a role model in working with all of these other agents and officers from different departments and to help us complete our investigations in a much faster pace. We have to learn how to work together and in doing that, working together on an everyday basis, we know that there's a lot of crime out there on the street that we need to be about the business of cleaning up and once we pull together in one arena, we can do that and we can learn to lead each other. For every officer to be a leader, each individual must want to improve. That improvement starts with classroom training, expands with operational assignments, and continues throughout an officer's career through self-development. Leaders happen one officer at a time. Success depends on organizational support and encouragement. Our process emphasizes initiative and self-accountability. The model provides numerous resources and programs for those with drive and desire. I've been with the New York City Police Department since 1984. And back in 1993, I wrote a proposal called the Narcotics Enforcement Initiative. That was really never addressed by the 3-0 scandal, the Mullen Commission. And I testified before the Mullen Commission, and I wish that would have been more. The Narcotics Initiative has been extremely successful. I piloted it here in the 72nd Precinct, and it was copied citywide as a citywide program. Well, I teach them how to close down chronic narcotics locations and using different sorts of uh, investigative techniques, utilizing confidential informants and executing search warrants. And when an idea such as the Narcotics Initiative comes from within a precinct command and the higher-ups, the big bosses and headquarters, you see that, yes, it's a good idea. You empower people on patrol, and uh, the Narcotics Initiative was a perfect example of empowering cops to get the job done. I was recently promoted to sergeant special assignment, where I now make lieutenant pay, still in the rank of sergeant, which is rare that a patrol sergeant is promoted to that rank. It had a real positive effect on the patrol officers where they seen that one of their own could actually uh, get promoted and achieve that rank. Officers on patrol, when they're frustrated, tends to breed a negative attitude, and 
they just want to do their 20 years and get out, get off the job. When they see uh, someone on patrol get promoted to sergeant special assignment, they tend to want to follow that lead. And I think good leaders create good leaders. Every officer a leader can assist police organizations everywhere with programs, services, guidelines, and courses. It's a unique process that has been developed by an unusual partnership. Spearheaded by the International Association of Chiefs of Police, a collaborative developmental program is underway, supported by the Royal Canadian Mounted Police and the Federal Law Enforcement Training Center. Its purpose? To design a strategic leadership development structure and process that will assist police organizations worldwide with programs, guidelines, services, and references to better develop leaders from within. Good leadership creates positive realities. Every officer a leader is the promise of that future.